Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you the basics of rallying. The thing that makes rallying different from most other types of driving is that rally driving is under a lot worse conditions than a race car on a regular racetrack. This means that the fast way to drive on a slippery gravel or even a dirt road is very different than on a grippy surface. For example, if you stand on the brakes on a gravel road or an asphalt road, a lot of the car's weight will transfer to the front wheels and all four wheels may even lock up. On asphalt, with a lot of grip, the best technique is to brake as hard as possible while not locking up the wheels and using the tyre to get as much grip as possible while still maintaining control over the car. But on gravel there's not much traction and threshold braking in a straight line is not very effective. On gravel it is much more effective just to throw the car sideways and use the side walls of the tyres as one part of the braking and feather the brakes for more precise braking and then you're using the tyres in two directions simultaneously and you're misaligning the rear wheels from the fronts as you slide so that you can get more grip on the fresh surface so you've got all four wheels and a different patch of the road so you're getting as much as much grip as you can out of the car so as we see, sliding is, among other things, an effective traction tool in low grip situations. On the street or on a racetrack, you usually choose where you want to apex the corner and you steer smoothly through that point. In rally, we want the car to follow essentially the same path, but to pretty much do it while sliding with the wheels pointed more or less straight ahead relative to the car. We want to slide during a corner for several reasons. First, as in braking, there is little grip and we want to use the sidewalls of the tyres to take some of the lateral forces of the corner. Another reason we want to slide is on a slippery surface a car that is already sliding is easier to control than a car that is gripping. But the car that is gripping to the corner is a lot more unstable and can be unpredictable at some times. Also another reason is, and especially with an all-wheel drive car, you want to use the engine's power through the wheels to claw your way in towards the apex of the turn. Under high grip conditions a a racetrack pretty much, uh, the lateral grip of the tyres does this work for you. While under low grip, we use the clawing of the wheels in a forward direction to do some of this work. Weight balance is the most important part of car control and rally driving, and it's the art of shifting weight between the front and rear axles of the car. When you're sliding your car on a slippery surface, steering inputs are much less effective than they are on asphalt. But transferring the car's weight from one end of the car to the other has a very large effect on the direction the car will rotate. By transferring the car's weight forward, you would transfer traction to the front tires. So the only way to increase traction on a given tire is to increase the weight on it. And the way you do that is with a little throttle and a little brake. So if you're sliding through a corner and you want to tighten the line a little, the thing to do is not steer into the corner, but lift off a bit on the throttle and apply a little brake. Weight will transfer forward, the car will turn in, slide more, slow down and tighten the line. Right now I'll demonstrate on how to do this. Alright, we're going to get up to fourth up here. We're going to left foot brake to balance the weight of the car. There we go, do that nicely there as well. Use left foot braking pretty much well all the time to balance out the weight, put all the weight on the front tyres. You can also do the opposite, let off a less brake and more more throttle and you can get, get much uh, longer turns. 
Some corners are really tight, and you're not going to get the car to rotate around them enough with the normal technique described before. Now, if you try to turn in really hard, you'll probably understeer off the outside, and even a normal drift may not be tight enough. Whatever you do, don't reach for the handbrake. Instead, try and do a pendulum turn, or it's also known as a Scandinavian flick, by turning the car into a slide away from the corner, and then snapping it around to slide in the right direction for the corner, you'll transition the car more quickly than if you turned in alone. I'll just show you a few examples, and then I'll show you in detail how to do it. Right here I'm carrying a lot of speed, so I need a brake, let off the gas, turn right, then turn left, while accelerating all at the same time. Here we go again, slow motion, turn right, brake, let off the accelerator, turn left and accelerate. As we see here, I turn the steering wheel to the right, press in the brake and let off the gas, and then turn left and full throttle. Number one, start on the inside of the approach road, or at least with enough room to snap out wide. Number two, turn left away from the corner and touch the brakes to initiate a left hand slide. Use this slide to reduce your speed, as I said before, use it as your braking. Number three, turn the wheel to the right into the corner and punch the throttle for a second. This will transfer the weight to the rear wheels and will cause the car to snap hard to the right. Number four, straighten the wheel as the car snaps right and balance the throttle to hold your right hand slide. As I said before, adjust the throttle and the brake as necessary to shift the weight. All of what I said before applies very well for front wheel and all wheel drive vehicles and the weight balance issues apply for all drive layouts. But as everyone probably knows, hard acceleration on a rear wheel drive car usually causes it to throttle steer and slide out or turn on a sharp angle overcoming the effect of weight transfer to the rear under acceleration. On gravel, this is a weakness of rear wheel drive cars and you'll probably notice that very few leading rally cars are rear wheel drive as a result. Most older rally cars were rear wheel drive and they require a very precise throttle to get the slides right. This technique is different, it looks great, but it's not that fast. A handbrake on the rear wheels of a car is essentially a destabiliser. It's pretty much flicking the car around instead of using weight transfer to get the car to turn. It's only used in certain situations at low speeds and if it's used at medium or high speeds it can be very dangerous and unpredictable. If you're about to go off the road or if you have a very tight corner and not enough speed or room to initiate a pendulum, then you can consider pulling the handbrake. Right now, I'll demonstrate how to do this. Start slowing down for the corner, turn in, handbrake, clutch in, clutch out, get back on the power as soon as you can. The reason why you do that is so the car doesn't stall and go down to low revs. Right again, slow down for the corner, turn in, clutch in, handbrake, clutch out, accelerate. Alright, start slowing down. Turn in. Clutch in, handbrake, clutch out, accelerate. Turn in. Clutch in, handbrake, clutch out, accelerate. 
Same thing for up here. Turn in, clutch in, handbrake, clutch out, accelerate. And there you go. Alright, we'll do this one in slow motion. So, you can probably see down the bottom left the clutch pedal. You can see I'm pushing in to change down. Changing down to first, turning right, clutching in, handbraking, clutch out, accelerating. And accelerating all through to get out of the corner. You'll know before that I mentioned using your left foot on the brake pedal. There are several reasons for this, but the most important is that you take a fraction of a second off the transition time from the throttle to the brake, which is very significant when you're playing the throttle and the brake on and off each other as um, I described before for weight balance. When you're sliding, the the two pedals are more like the rudder of an airplane than they are like throttle and brake. Of course when you're using a normal gearbox then you may have to use your left foot on the clutch as well. This, get, this can get tricky using three pedals at once but if you practice enough you can benefit greatly. The trick is to have your right foot on the gas, your left foot on the brake and momentarily use your left foot to clutch and change gear. In four wheel drive cars, it's essential to use this rudder action to control the speed difference between the front and rear wheels. It's incredibly important to make sure that you have constant balance of the car as well. So, weight balance and left foot braking combine as one pretty much. But keep in mind, still use your right foot for braking as well. This can get really hard getting used to left foot and right foot braking as it can get confusing you can sometimes press in the brake instead of the clutch but if you learn and get used to it enough then it's definitely worth the trouble I'll give you a quick example let's say you're going into a quite a sharp left hand turn and you want to slow down for the corner so you're coming in at fifth gear you use your right foot to brake and your left foot to change down gears as like a normal car and then when you get to the corner you put your left foot on the brake and you use left foot braking as to tighten the corner. So to review some of the counterintuitive things about rally driving under sliding friction is number one, sliding is very effective for braking and for turning. Number two, you steer with the throttle and the brake, transferring weight rearward and forward respectively as necessary to control the slides. Number three, Use your left foot on the brake so you can play the throttle and the brake against each other like the rudder on an aircraft. Number four, if you have a four wheel drive car, you can use your left foot on the brake to control the speed difference between the front and rear wheels. The biggest problem with jumps is that almost every car wants to go nose, nose over. If you're slowing down or braking on the takeoff, you'll definitely land on your nose, so you want to be accelerating at the launch. For even the biggest flat out jumps, I tap the brakes and get back on the gas just before the launch so the car takes off nose up. Also you want to land with each wheel at fractionally different moments. So you want all the shocks to be on a different harmonic rate, meaning if you compress them all exactly at the same moment, they will all bounce back up at the same time, and you'll bounce back up in the air and lose traction and maybe even spin out. So what you want to do is you want to land either on your front wheels first or your rear wheels first. Just make sure you don't land all four wheels at the same time, otherwise you'll definitely bounce back. This concludes the basics of rally. Thank you guys for watching and if it helped you or you liked it, please leave a like.